Hello everyone, this is Clement, and I'm here to talk to you about cardinality. Now, cardinality is something that you often hear um, on the market, maybe in a lot of marketing materials, and it's also a, a question that a lot of our customers ask us about. Um, as you may know, Wavefront supports what we call extreme levels of cardinality in the time series space, but what does that really mean, and how, how should you really be thinking about data? Right. So, let's, um, let's just talk about cardinality in a very simple example first. Right. So, if you just have a single time series that you're reporting into the system, right, and you've been reporting this time series for over the last year or so, there would be millions of data points, but you still have just one time series. And with, as with any system, you probably need to have some sort of way to identify it so that you could actually pull it back and differentiate from other time series that you have. Let's say you decide to call this CPU usage. And inside Wavefront, you need to at least have a single dimension that you have. And let's just say this is source as web server one, right? So this is the identity of this time series. It has a name, it has a source, and it has been reporting over time. You could say that this is a system with cardinality one, right? The moment that you introduce a new time series in the system that you're rep reporting, let's say you just started a new web server, and let's just say it, it's also called CPU usage, but it, you now call it source of web server 2, now you have a system that has a cardinality of 2. There are exactly two time series in the system. Now, with many, times, uh, with many time series databases, you can actually have additional dimensions that you attach to any time series that you send. And in the case of Wavefront, you could be including things like perhaps the environment of the machine. It is in production. Maybe if you're running in AWS, you include the availability zone that is running in. Or if it's a particular service, you could actually have the version number of the service. And it actually would be helpful if you're, you just identify the name of the service itself. right? So in Wavefront, these have particular names that, um, that we refer to when you are actually accessing the data. This would be the metric name. We have something called the source of the metric. And then we have, as we said before, all these dimensions that we attach to them, which we call point tags. Now, the collection of all of this information is the identity of a time series. So as you could imagine, if you were reporting a time series and you happen to be adding a point tag at some time, let's say we, you were reporting CPU usage and you reported it with source web one, but at some point you decided to add environment equals prod, that would become a new time series in the system. And you would see that in, 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 in the UI, for example, with a different color, because that's now a different time series in, in, in our time series database. Now, the problem with, um, with cardinality is such that if you start sending data such that they are no longer time series information, but they look more like events in the system, then you have a problem where when you're accessing the data, you have to do a lot of manipulations or a lot of aggregations in order to access that data. So to illustrate that point, let's assume you now have a new metric that you're sending, and let's say it is a request metric. And let's say you were a good, a good citizen and you named it request and you named it you know, with a source. And let's say you pick the source, whether you're running on Kubernetes or not, you're running on, on bare metal, you pick the physical machine that's running um, that particular service and you named it um, and you, you make the source reflect that information. But instead of you know, these kind of more, what we call more static or low churn metric, you decide to put the user ID inside it. So a single time series comes in and as a request of one, and as user ID equals X, right? And then another point comes in, maybe seconds later or milliseconds later, and it has another user ID and it's Y, right? And you would see the problem with this is that a single data point only ever appears once in the system. So you can't even draw a line between them unless you do some sort of aggregation or some sort of sum to collapse that, that information. But the problem is the database or the time series database or the metric store that you're working with is no longer actually storing time series information. Well, you could, um, uh, you could say that, OK, well, let's take away that user ID information and collapse into, into a counter. But let's say you really do want to look at uh, an individual request and look at the user IDs that are involved. right? And so the way to think about this problem is that you have a time series store that allows you to do these kind of high cardinality um, analysis of, of data, including you know, multiple kinds of point tags that you're ingesting, you know, metric names to your heart's content and sources. 
But if you really want to look at individual requests, which may include things like IP address, maybe, maybe even the exact URL that was being hit uh, on that request alone, you would actually use our distributed tracing offering to actually encode that information. And there, you know, we truly support what we call unlimited cardinality. Right. So when you're thinking about data, I think a, not, a different way to think about this is you actually have an occurrence of an observation that's coming into your system. And it is a stream of these operations that are coming into your system. And you're thinking about how you can measure them, right? And so historically, what, what happens with, with such events information is you probably aggregate them in some way so that you could actually have a time series, right? So a very simple example would be, let's say you just have a series of requests coming in, and you just have a counter that you build up, and you actually add them together. And you now have, or actually it should be always be monotonically increasing. So you just have a single line that's counting the number of events that you have seen, right? So that's a time series, right? You could actually still name it. You could actually still include static information such as the environment, the, the AZ, the source itself. But at the same time, you could also send that same information into our distributed tracing store that encodes all of this information, often in a causal manner. So you can actually reason about you know, a service calling uh, service A, calling service B, calling service C. But it's all in the context of a single request or a single event happening in your system. And now the question you would ask is, why do you want this data to be captured in both ways? And the reason for that is because metrics or, or, or time series data is very easily manipulated and very quickly retrieved, right? So you want a system that allows you to be running maybe hundreds of thousands of alerts every minute or every, even every second. And you want that information to be able to be rendered on a dashboard, on heads-up displays, in, in network operation centers, so that you could actually understand very quickly, are we having you know, an influx of requests? Are we having a capacity problem? and whatnot. And so metrics allows you to have that very quick understanding of what's going on in your system. But distributed tracing allows you to drill through into maybe a single request now that you, you have some idea of where the problem is, perhaps. Or you just have a, a forensics question, and you want to look at a single request or maybe a single user, and you want to see how that request actually traversed uh, through your system. Right. So a good rule of thumb that we often uh, suggest to customers is, is actually exactly what I just described before, which is if a time series or a time series that you're reporting never actually re reports more than a single data point, then you probably are going into a distributed tracing problem, and you should be thinking about sending us spans or information in span logs and whatnot. Whereas if your data is ever reported maybe at least a couple minutes or maybe at least a, a couple of samples over time, then you could actually consider sending it as metrics into the platform and into the, into the, and into the time series um, uh, atom. And so these are the, the kind of the, the things that you'll be thinking about as you are modeling your data, as you know, events are happening or obser observations are happening in your data. You want to be able to collapse that information into metrics in a, such a way that the, you actually have a time series that you could actually perform actual analytics on it. At the same time, perhaps consider sending information as uh, spans as distributed tracing information into the Wavefront system so you have basically the best of both worlds. The ability to alert, the ability to have this at-a-glance view of what is going on with your system, the ability to do a lot of the, the, the long time scale analytics um, that Wavefront is famous for, but at the same time allows you to drill through and say, OK, well, now I know, you know kind of where the problem is or where, that, uh, where the source of the problem is, and now I want to look at a single request or maybe just a cluster of requests and look at just the raw data the, the kind of the you know the infinite cardinality of information that is associated with a single event, and um, hopefully that that's helpful um, for for you as you understand or model your data. If you have questions, reach reach out to us on Slack. Reach out to us via email. You know we are really happy to think about you know how you can model your observability data in the various different ways that we have inside Wavefront. I've just touched on metrics and, and distributed tracing. Obviously, we have our histogram offering. We have a span logs offering. We also have events uh, in our system. And so all of that is, is just an arsenal of tools that we think about as you conquer your observability journey. Thank you so much.